Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to, of course, another CSK News episode. I hope you guys all enjoy, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are here for the explanation of the big story out there. That is the Optic Indian CSGO roster, one of their members known as Forsaken, now being, of course, caught cheating on land at Extremes Land 2018, an Asian tournament, um, in, in just this past week. So it's been pretty crazy. If you guys also saw as well, I did upload this same video. We have a few extra things now that we know about the whole situation. I did upload the same video, though, on my eSports News channel, and thank you guys all very much. That broke, you know, 15,000 views. It was our highest viewed video of all time on that channel so thank you guys very much and uh, I guess a future uh, notion as well for all of you guys who are here on the CSGO News channel I do upload CSGO News to the esports news channel 24 hours earlier so that's just kind of a preface for this but we do know a few extra things out there about the entire situation and this has been one of the most dramatic situations in CSGO we have seen for quite some time it really makes you uh, kind of opens your eyes as to how passionate the Indian CSGO team or that, that scene was and it really also makes you kind of wonder what the future of Optic will be when it comes to playing Indian CSGO so to give you guys of course a background you guys can the timestamps will be down below for this story I'm gonna give you guys the background as to what happened of course a little bit of background about optic as well and then of course their response which happened within a few hours after they caught forsaken cheating on land yes this guy was actually cheating on land and kind of to preface that as well of course optic India it was several months ago they trialed almost 2,000 people over in India to get, nail it down to this five-man team with their coach as well and of course that was the best of the best Indian talent and we sh it showed right off the bat this was the best team in India by far and away. They qualified for a few, I guess, some minor tournaments out there. One was a monsoon tournament there as well. Over in India, they won that. It was a small prize pool, but still, they were by far and away the most dominant Indian team. When you look for the qualifiers for ESL Pro League uh, Season 8 Asia, they also qualified for that. That's four teams there compete for one spot for EPL Finals, which is absolutely huge, right? A, a brand new team, especially out of the Indian scene, having a chance to qualify for ESL Pro League Finals is pretty insane. Would they have done it? They would have had to beat, I think, teams like Beachy and Tai Lu, so probably not. But just qualifying for that, you saw how dominant they were. No team in the qualifier, I don't think, surpassed five or six rounds against them. So it, it was pretty uh, enormous to see this team come together so well and mesh so well and do so well together online. And this was their first official LAN event. Let's get that out the window, guys. It is now, this is their first official LAN together. So I believe up until now, what's believed right now is, of course, Optic did fund this team. They did not, have, of course, relocate them to a house. These players played online qualifiers together. That is it. They did not play together in a single house or so we think so far. I'm going to try to reach out to the guys. And again, if anyone from Optic India, management, directors, anyone, any of the ex-players want to reach out to me, I would love to do an interview with you guys, get your background about this, and of course publish that to all of you guys to see the inside details. But it's believed as of right now, these guys were not playing in a house together. They only played online qualifiers. And that adds a bit to the drama suspicions of if they knew Forsaken was cheating. So, all right, I lied guys. Uh, you didn't have to do much deep digging, but actually the team did have a house together. They didn't have official house, but they actually boot camped together at least twice. I'll show you guys right now so with some crappy phone quality, but to interrupt this as well, these guys did play together on a LAN setting. You can see this one right here. The boys are playing together. They post their videos on the Instagram. Now you guys can't hear that, but they actually do uh, throughout that video. And then you scroll up again past all their results, which you really do see they were doing quite well. And also another boot camp here as well, where they show the entire house. So the teams and the boys, the boys, they did play together. Take my word for it. I'm going to show you guys a quick clip as well because I have never, I've ne oh man, I've never seen a pro player. We haven't, of course, there have not been too many pro players caught, like officially caught cheating on LAN in its history so far. But here's Forsaken legitimately shoving off the admin. They're like, hey, I'm just going to check your computer here, man. He's like, no, 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 just don't. It's like, if it, if it couldn't be more obvious, he was trying to delete the cheat he had installed on his computer at a LAN event. And again, I talked about this in the eSports News Channel. Was this ballsy or was this just pure stupidity to try and cheat on LAN in 2018? Now, yes, we have plenty of people out there like Dan M. I love the guy, but he still thinks that cheating on LAN is a very common thing. I think a lot of us would agree it's probably not. Online qualifiers for sure, specifically in the Asian scene. But now the Indian scene will forever be marked by Forsaken from Optic actually trying to cheat on LAN. So he was caught. It was very obvious. Right after he was caught as well, we have pro players like Ben Tett. He talked about this, how a lot of pros in the scene had suspected he was a cheater based off a lot of it, uh, his statistics as well as there have been clips. Uh, there have been many clips out there surfacing back now from 2016, 2017, as well as of course this, this most recent clip from 2018 at this LAN event, which are very, very skeptical. And it makes everyone question that it really makes you question if these guys could have possibly known for the Optic Indian CSGO roster. Yes, it's been, I pretty much confirmed they had their suspicions. They knew about former alleged back bands and, and former, uh, of course, these clips out there, but they never questioned 
questioned it, and especially the organization themselves never questioned it. I mean, it's just hard to imagine. They trialed 2,000 people, and one of them happens to be the cheater, which, I mean, it does make sense. It's also a bit unlucky, though. If the organization knew about these suspicions, they didn't act on them and actually question them even further. And now it has actually come out, of course, uh, shortly after this, Optic India did release their statement uh, to HLTV, and they said the players had and the management had no idea. They had no idea whatsoever of these cheats, which immediately was super hard to believe, right? If you're going to be playing these qualifiers with this guy who is obviously hitting some weird clips, if you guys look at all the stats out there, the headshots per round, it's been a, a meme passing around. It is very, very hard to believe in this day and age, a professional team who's been playing together for five or, or so months to not suspect their teammate or to question it and to just keep on playing like they don't even, to act like they don't even know about that. So I think, I think a majority of us out there kind of suspected that, you know, it's really hard for the team not to know, but a lot of us also said it's definitely possible they did not know. And that was until though, within hours, which I honestly, it, it really almost, it, it pisses me off to be honest guys. The treatment of this team, it really comes down to, we need more, uh, more of an answer from Optic India because within a few hours of releasing Forsaken from the roster because he cheated, which makes the most sense, right? That's the first thing you got to do. They release Forsaken and within a few hours, Optic India posts this, releasing the entire team. And uh, immediately you think of maybe three options, right? One, the team had to have known he was cheating. The organization thinks, okay, uh, we're gonna release the cheater. And of course, wow, we found out these guys know he was cheating. Of course, okay, we released the entire team. Two though, they didn't say, that they, they clearly said the players had no clue about this. So you, you might be thinking, okay, maybe they, they saw this as a huge, huge thing going forward. It's never gonna be forgotten. We're gonna drop the entire roster because there's no longer gonna be an Optic Indian CSGO team. That, that could be a thing, right? They've already dropped so much funding into this. I know the community out there is probably never going to forget about this. We'll just drop the entire roster, which brings up three. If the players did not know, though, how is this possibly the right way to go about it? Because you just gave these players the same treatment as the cheater. You released a cheater for doing what he did, and then to punish the rest of the team for what they didn't do and give them the same treatment as a cheater, it actually blows my mind that Optic can now go 48 hours without an official response. The coach comes out or the management comes out, I think it was the director who says the players and the management had no clue, no suspicions about him cheating, and then at the same time, within eight hours of you releasing a cheater, which is a good, that's the right thing to do, of course, you release the entire team without any context, without any explanation, it actually baffles my mind how this is going to be if this is any other organization out there the community would be freaking out but because it's a lower tier team and the Indian scene which no one really you know it's a rising scene right but no one really hears about it too much no one's really reacting the way it needs to be you know reacted to this is absolutely terrible management and I think the community especially the players in the Indian scene, the fans, the followers of the Optic Indian roster, they deserve an explanation because you cannot simply just release a roster, especially they did not know about the cheating going on, and give them the same treatment as the guy who just ended the entire Indian CSGO scene, especially for Optic. This will never be forgotten. This will, in my opinion, forever be a tarnish on their brand. And so maybe that's why they released the entire roster, right? They realize that from now on, if Optic ever has an Indian CSGO roster, this will never be forgotten. So yeah, that's the story. I've decided as well, I'm going to push uh, back another news episode tomorrow, guys. There's a bunch of CSGO news out there, some roster changes, some tweets I want to talk about. That'll be for tomorrow's episode, or maybe Monday's episode. I just, I, I do apologize for getting a bit angry, but this is, we never see this kind of stuff in the CSGO scene. This lack of management, this lack of communication, and it never really bodes well for teams out there who do not communicate the issues inside them. On top of that, I do want to thank all of you guys, not only who liked the videos, who watched the videos that I first released as well in the Esports News channel, but the response as well. I have, I have never seen seen a response of so many Indian CSGO fans in my life, so many DMs, so many uh, tweets in general about this. I've had friends, I've had um, also fans of the team themselves, friends of the coach, as well as the players reach out to me and say, you know, the players could not have known about this. Of course, there's many people out there in the Indian scene who've also said there's no way they couldn't know about it. But the thing is right now, we just don't know the truth, right? There are currently probably so many things going on in that organization, probably so many things being said of what the players uh, need to say in the future, what they need to avoid. We may never know know the full truth about this, but as of right now, we know there's a huge contradiction. The coach or management, the director comes out to HLTV and he says the players had no clue about this and then the team releases the entire roster. Those are definitely conflicting viewpoints in my opinion. If both those things are true, if the players do not know about the cheating and then they release the entire roster, 
This is quite possibly the worst decision making and management I've ever seen in CSGO uh, in my short span of four years in the scene. But I hope you guys all enjoy. I'll be back here probably tomorrow or in a couple days again with some other stories out there. We have Jason R, we have Mike Galele, we have Pasha Biceps. There's a lot going on, but as of right now, I want to get this video out there. Thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Jake Moore, like you. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this crazy situation, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Goodbye.